Hello third grade, welcome along, it's time for more art and it's time for another pointer list picture. Do you remember that style we used last time? Well this time we're taking it to the next level. Here's the picture that you're going to be um, that you're going to be creating this time. Well how is it different? How is it the next level? What makes it different from the tree that you did? I think it's the fact that the colors are all mixing together and blending and I think that's why it's the next level. Um, we're still doing the same technique of dots but we're, we're creating layers of dots and see how they kind of overlap and interact with each other. It creates these uh, different shapes and colors and it creates light and shadow doesn't it? Alright so we're we're using some more advanced pointer list techniques this time. I hope you like the picture. I hope you have fun making it. I hope you have the, the colors available. Let me just show you the colors that I used. Here they are. Um, so yeah, there's some, there's not too many colors. Uh, there's some sort of doubling up. So for example, I have, well, I have just one green, orange, and yellow. Um, and then I have um, a couple of pinks um, so there's sort of a, a variation on pink there um, I just have the uh, I have two blues and just the one purple so hopefully you can find similar kinds of colors or if not your picture will look different and that doesn't matter it'll just be different all right so let's get going so the first thing that we'll do today is draw around a book to give ourselves a, a, a rectangle within the rectangle, like a kind of picture frame. So any old book will do. This is my Spanish parallel textbook where it's got uh, one side in Spanish, the other side in English. It's very useful for, for reading um, and learning another language. So yeah, place the book kind of in the center and um, draw around it for your frame. I drew that very lightly with the pencil, but hopefully you can see that um, on the video. If not, don't worry, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll see as the picture goes on. As long as you can see the lines that you've drawn on your page, that's the main thing. Next, I'm going to sketch out the, um, the landscape that I'm going to draw. I'm going to start with a curving line at the bottom, something like this. I'm gonna, I better press a little bit harder now so you can see it. So there's a hillside and then there are some bushes. And I'm gonna have one just disappearing off the side there. These bushes can be just kind of like round blobs really. They can overlap like that, that looks quite nice. Then there's another um, curving line for a hillside behind. Make sure that it covers all of these bushes. You can have like a little mountain if you want to. And there, and see how it swoops down, uh, but it still stays above the bushes here. Then we have um, some more round shapes for clouds. just outline those clouds a little more so you can see them. And I'm going to start coloring at the bottom of the page and move up. So along this bottom line and especially in this bottom corner it's going to be quite pinky purpley kind of colors. So I'll start with the pink and away we go. So now, the, the trick of getting this picture right is being able to space out the dots more or less depending on where you are in the picture. Okay, so at the moment the, the dots are all quite close together. We could say they are compact. 
But as we move up this little section of land here, this little hillside, we want to spread out the dots so they're not as compact, not close together, but further apart from each other. And that way the other colors can mix in and kind of mingle together because there's more space. Okay, so after you've done sort of something like this, going further up the hill with the pink, um, you're gonna spread those dots out and make them more um, far away from each other, make them um, spaced out, make them less compact. Those are just many ways to basically say the same thing. Just spread them all out a bit more. The next color that I'm going to use will be the purple. And we're just gonna have a little bit of this purple just at the, at the very bottom of the page here. And the next color is orange. It's going to sweep across this area uh, where the pink dots are more spread out, but leave some space at the top for the yellow. So moving next onto these um, round bushes, uh, each one is gonna have a, a pretty much even coverage of green. So it should be not too compact, not too spaced out, and pretty, pretty much the same all the way across the bush. All right, then um, we're gonna use colors to give it a 3D effect. The, um, the yellow goes along the top and just a little bit kind of down to about halfway. And then we want to show that this underside of the bush is darker. And um, we're actually going to do that with a pink color mixed into the green. And this, this will make it look darker on this side. And finally, while I still have the pink, I'm just gonna spread a little bit of that pink onto the yellow underneath because the bush has a shadow on this hillside too. Does that make sense? If you wanted to go even darker, remember the purple that you used? We could just have a little bit of purple right in there where it's the darkest. Not too much though. Okay, so we're gonna do all of the other bushes in the same way. So the next thing we're going to do is the mountain behind. And we're gonna start with a blue for this one, quite a dark blue. And um, it should be quite similar to the purple that you used at the bottom. Similar in the sense that it's kind of a similar tone. It's not much darker or much lighter. Of course it's different because it's blue and not purple, but you see how they're, they're kind of a similar tone. So with this blue, um, we're gonna start along the top of the mountain and work down and spread out like we did at first with the pink here. So we start quite compact along the top, but then spread out and make the dots further apart as we go down. Now we're gonna mix some green into this and same kind of thing, like more dense and compact at the top and spreading out as we move down. And now I have a lighter blue. The lighter blue is gonna mix in to this, um, to this area where the dots are more spaced out but we're gonna keep the dots still with space. 
we're going to add one more color. And that last color that I'm adding in is some more pink. And now I'm trying to fill up the spaces so there's not too much white showing anymore. Okay, so the next will be the sky. We'll leave the clouds and do them last of all. So um, I have the light blue again, and we're going to do a quite an even coverage of the of the sky. So um, not too compact, not too spaced out, but just quite even all the way across. The next color we'll add is pink. I have a, a slightly different pink to the one I used before. So here's the one I've been using um, in the rest of the picture. And here's the new pink that I'm going to use for the sky. So yeah, you can see comparing them, they're quite different. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't have a different pink. It'll still work. I just want to try um, putting this different pink in the sky to see how that looks. And I'm going to bring back my darker blue just for a little bit of um, color in the in the top part of the picture, just to make that sky look a little bit deeper um, at the very top of the picture. For the clouds, we're going to have orange, yellow, and pink, lovely sunset cloud colors. Um, but we also have to be careful uh, not to overpower these clouds and um, make them too colorful because we do need to leave some white there as well. So let's start with the pink. And just keep the dots really spaced out. All right, and we're finished. Um, I hope that you like making your second pointer list picture and I um, hope that you're really pleased with what you make. I think it's a really beautiful way to, to make pictures and um, I hope you do too. Maybe one day you can try painting one um, and, and see how it's different actually using real paints instead of markers or maybe maybe just pencils if that's what you've been using. One last thing for today, since we've got this big wide frame on the page and um, if you feel very proud of your work, it's always nice to add a signature. So I'm going to take my pencil and just in this bottom corner, I'm going to add my name and the date, so just the year usually. 